Our guest this week is the supremely talented actress who played Mika on The Walking Dead. We also know her from Speechless, The Night Shift, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and soon he's going to be in Tina Fey's show, Mr. Mayor. Kyla Kennedy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am so good. Um, I am just excited to talk to you. You know, I'm interviewing you, but one of my favorite things, uh, despite all the amazing things you've done in your career, I really love the show you did, uh, Down and Dirty. It's mortifying for me to look back on those now, but I can appreciate them for what they are. But those, that, like, <laughs> at the time, I, I didn't realize that those would be on the internet forever. Did you write those, or did you, I did, like... I did it, Nick Floyd and I, we um, came up with the concept together, and, um, yeah, we, I wrote most of the questions, and then we would, like, walk around cons, because I used to do those a lot, and, um, we would ask people questions that they would be too afraid to ask. Like that was the whole idea. Just like, you know, right. think like you'd want to ask somebody, but you'd maybe be a little bit too nervous to, or be like, maybe that's too bold. And so that, yeah, no. it, just kind of, it happened so fast, actually. I was rewatching some of them just for research and they still hold up. Just letting you know, the Norman Reedus one is my favorite. Um, Cause you get him, he's usually was, so- yeah, he's, yeah like, he's like so loose in that interview. All right, so how have you been holding up in quarantine? Good. I mean, recently I've been going a little stir crazy just because yeah. like I've been trying to go outside and go on hikes, but you can only do that for so long. I feel like once you go around the neighborhood, like the fifth time that week, you're done, you're over it. Um, totally. This is nice getting to meet a new person, even if it's hey, a hi, yes, <laughs> and talk. But um, I mean, obviously, it's we, we we need to do it. So it does give me a little bit of a sense of purpose staying home. I feel like I'm helping the only way I can, but it's definitely yeah. it's definitely stressful. Yeah, it's absolutely stressful. Um, okay, so let's start from the beginning. Um, you grew up actually in, you grew, or you're from South Carolina, right? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. part? I actually also grew up in South Carolina. I'm from Columbia. Really? I grew yeah. up in Charleston. But I Charleston. But I grew up in Atlanta when I was old enough. So you, you started acting at uh, an early age, like eight, right? Yeah, I was about eight, eight or nine when I, when I actually started. Okay, and what kind of work were you doing initially? Just honestly, whatever I could, I've wanted to do it since I was three. Like it was just, mm -hmm. I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. But my mom, obviously, you know, what kid doesn't want to be an actor? So she didn't take it right. too seriously. Um, yeah. But I, once I was in Atlanta, there's obviously more opportunities out there. So anything mm -hmm. I could audition for, I would just do. Um, and wow. one of the first, yeah. So when I did like a little TV movie out there. And like, mm -hmm. once I did that, I just... I didn't stop. I just kept going. I didn't want to, I didn't wow. Want to yeah. Stop. So how did you fall into The Walking Dead? I had, I'd never heard of it before. Neither had my mom. I didn't mm -hmm. want to do it at first because I was in school and I was like some stupid zombie show. I don't want to, you know. Yeah. Do yeah. Yeah. It. And um, <laughs> my mom was like, you know what? We'll just take you after. Our, you can just pave it really quickly. Um, I remember the sides were really strange because obviously they couldn't release the script. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just like a weird scene. And I like I went in and I taped it. Uh, I didn't hear anything back. And then they wanted me to fly out to Atlanta to go yeah. to a screen test. And I was like, not for it. I was like, I've got school to worry about. And wow. I was, in fifth grade. I was like, I was like, I can't just drop everything and go to Atlanta for this zombie show. Like that's like, all that was going through my mind. Yeah. So um, I did a Skype call, not Zoom, Skype. Mm -hmm. We kind of did the scenes online. And mm -hmm. from there I got it. And then I flew out. Wow. That's insane. And so obviously, um, a lot of people, when they talk about your character, they also mention Brighton's character, Wizzy. Um, yeah. And I understand that you guys actually knew each other beforehand. Yeah, no, Brighton and I went to the same school. We actually both got the call in the car that they wanted us to screen test together. Because originally, oh. Mika was supposed to be a brother. It was going to be a brother and a sister. They brought us both in for a screen test. And, oh. and obviously, we had good chemistry. She was like his friend, so. And are you guys still in touch? Oh yeah, absolutely. I love her. She's still like one of my closest friends. We are always going to be friends just because like we have so many memories together. That's awesome. So what do you remember from your time on The Walking Dead? That was like the first set I was on where I felt like I was treated as an equal almost. If yeah, that yeah, yeah. I was so nervous going into it. Not even because of the zombies, just because I was like, oh, these people have been on the show for so long. I'm just going to like mm -hmm. come on in here. I was scared to work with Melissa, I remember, because I was like, she's so good, and I don't know if I can do it. And everyone on that show, the kindest people, and I know that people always say that when they're working right. on the show, they're, oh, they're amazing. But 
every single person on that show was so kind and humble and like welcomed me with open arms and, and the zombies were great I remember Greg took me into the trailer one day and showed me how they kind of did the makeup so I wasn't scared oh that was no important way. for me <laughs> I was wow. just curious I was like how do they how do they do that I remember like with the chard walkers I was fascinated they were on fire oh, yeah that, that was crazy that is insane um so when did you I just actually watched the grove the other day and that that episode is still amazing. Um, one of the best episodes people still regard. We're like 10 seasons in. Um, w when did you get the call about uh, your character getting killed off? I got the call, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was like two weeks before. Like the second I got the call, I was like, okay, you know what? Like I kind of sensed it was coming a little bit. I think that the way I went out, I wouldn't change it. Because I think that episode is so, I never watch anything I'm in, ever. Like, I yeah, just, I'm yeah. not one of those people. But that yeah. episode, I've watched, and it's like, I'm able to take myself out of it, and, like, I don't see it as me playing, and it's just, the way it was written, it's just insane. I think that, you know, I just feel lucky to, that's if I was, the, that's how I was going <laughs> to die. I'll die that way. <laughs> so when did you sort of figure out, because you said you weren't really aware of, like, The Walking Dead, like, before you got on the show. When did you start, like, figuring out, like, how sort of big it was, um, once you were on it. I didn't realize how big it was till I think I did like a con, I don't know. I mean, at this point I did like my first con right before I died, right. I think. And like seeing all the people there, I mean, it's right in front of your face. I was like, this is huge, this is insane. I'm like I've never seen people dress up as other people like and know everything about the show, which I yeah. thought was so cool. Yeah, the fans are amazing on that show. Um, so after Walking Dead, you're still pretty young, but you, I mean, your IMDb is like really impressive. Like you're not even 18 yet. Like that's kind of insane. Um, it, how, how far until you get uh, speechless or how long until you get speechless? Oh gosh, I got speechless a little bit after Walking Dead. I think I did like a few recurrings on some shows after and I, that was in Atlanta. So I remember I took some time to be with my family, but speechless wasn't too far after. I did that. I forget. We've been, we were on for three years. Um, it was in a pretty similar time, which I was happy to do that. I remember at that time, I was kind of figuring out if I wanted to do, because I had like talked about maybe doing a drama or Speechless, which is a comedy. And I'm, I think I, I chose Speechless just because of the message behind it. I was really passionate about, you know, what it stood for. And also I thought doing a comedy would be fun. It's not like just like, you know, a comedy to be a comedy. I mean, like it really had a great message to that show. Oh. My sister was born. She had a brain hemorrhage at birth. So to me, oh, the story wow. was very and close to home. Um, mm. And I just feel like personally, whenever I would see a movie or a show that depicted someone with special needs, A, half the time it was an actor and or if it would just always be kind of dark and gloomy and kind of, you know, focus on the negative aspects. And obviously that is a real thing that people face. But I also think that you know, everybody has bad moments and everybody struggles sure. with it. There's also so many good moments in life and, yeah. and, and we all face our own different challenges. And I wanted to focus on, you know, we just, you know, everybody goes through things, but let's focus on the, the good parts of life and the things that can happen. And I don't know, the show just opened up so many great discussions. Um, I just feel so lucky that I was able to be a part of it. What, what did, I guess, what did you learn the most from that show? Honestly, I just, I think I learned people, misconceptions about people with disabilities i mm -hmm. had never been one to think um oh maybe this person can do this or you know we shouldn't have this people do this but people would come up to me on the streets um and be like you know i didn't think anybody that had cp could act we shouldn't make assumptions about what people can and cannot do and and every person's different and some people are comfortable with this and some people aren't um and so I just think opened up a lot of good discussions. And also I got to work with another amazing cast. Um, and you got to meet John Cleese? Yes, I know. I got to work with him in London. That was insane. That must have been just like great acting, like in the moment, like to not be freaking out and to just act normal. Like that was such a great scene. Right. And also his presence is just so like, I hear, like, I feel like, you know, some people have that energy where they just walk into a room and everybody has to look at them. So yes. I remember like when he came on set, I was like, I gotta play it so cool. I'm guessing you were uh, a big Monty Python fan or familiar oh, with absolutely. those? Yeah, I mean, you have <laughs> no, to. No, I, right? I was definitely familiar with his work. So unfortunately, Speechless ended, but um, 
you now are on to a new show that I've read about that uh, people don't know too much about, but it's called Mr. Mayor, right? Starring Ted Danson and it's Tina Fey's show, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I just started this one. We were on episode three that we stopped at right before everything kind of went down. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing a new show on NBC. Tina Fey, Robert Carlock created it. Um, I played Ted Danson's daughter. It's called Mr. Mayor. So that's going to be really fun to, to do. I'm excited, but at the same time, like, <laughs> I'm still nervous about it because, you know, it takes a second to like, I'm working with people that I like don't even think should know my name. I mean, you've already worked with Minnie Driver and Andrew Lincoln, Melissa McBride, John Cleese. So, you know, Ted Danson, I mean, you, you are, you are allowed to act with them, I think. I mean, that, I think it's incredible. I mean, I don't think so. Not yet. You don't but think? Okay. I'll <laughs> I agree. I'll fake yeah. it. Do you think like there's gonna now be like a sea of quarantine content when all this is over? Like we're gonna see quarantine movies and COVID shows and things like that. I, I mean, I think so. I, I mean, a lot of people are taking time to be creative, write, and like make little short videos at home. So I think we'll have a lot of fun stuff coming out. Um, I personally have been like trying to just like write and do things and I know some of my friends have done like voiceover things. I think it's a nice break for the earth. I'm ready for it to be over, obviously. Yes. <laughs> and I think we should look at the positives yeah. while we can. Um, you know, we're giving the earth a second to breathe and to, to clean up a little bit. Um, but I think that everyone's going to be I'm really motivated to work now. I know I've never oh. wanted to work more in my life. I wonder how everything's just going to look after this is all over. I mean, just what kind of, will there be less content, more content? Like, because eventually Netflix is going to have, they're going to run out of stuff to put out. There's only so much Tiger King you can make. Right, only so many virtual reunions. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm hopefully, and we might just have to end up doing something like this. This will be the new (laughs) show. We have a question we sometimes ask guests. It's pretty important. So I just wanted to run it by you. Um, Would you rather fight five, goose-sized Negans or one Negan-sized goose? One Negan-sized goose, because hear me out, okay? Okay. I am a good hider, mm-hmm. and I think that if there were just one of them, I could I could figure out a way to outsmart him. Oh, yes. I don't know. I think that's where it gets tricky. The more you, <laughs> the more you pile up, the easier it is for one of them to come up on you. When you're oh, for sure. And I just know myself in the moment. I'd be like, are there four or are there five? Like, I just forget. <laughs> just like five mini Jeffrey Dean Morgans with bats. I think that'd be kind of cool. But um, yeah, hard to handle. And um, just one more. In Death Stranding, the video game that Norman Reedus starred in, he had a, um, he scaled mountains with a fetus in his backpack. Uh, if you were the star of Death Stranding, what would you put in your backpack? Oh, gosh. I know. It's I another really serious actor question. Oh my gosh. Um, it depends. It depends. Okay, I'll yeah. give like a lame answer and then I'll give sure. like my tree. It's like obviously okay. I'd choose like water, right? Sure. That's a- yeah. But if I could choose like a fun, I'd bring like a Nintendo Switch. That way yes. I'd be Animal Crossing while I was up there and I'd be Oh fine. my. Animal Crossing is saving me from quarantine. I am. Me too. I'm so glad I found that. So, um, with all your work, are you still able to go to school and everything, or? I actually graduated, so I, Oh. yeah, so when I was on Speechless, I had a set teacher with me, and I just didn't take a break. I just kept going, so I didn't take summers, um, so I completely graduated school, which mm-hmm. has been nice, but I continue to take, like, online college courses, just so I'm not sitting oh, okay. around. So you have Mr. Mayor coming up, obviously. Um, w- what else do you want to get into? Do you want to just keep acting? Do you want to do... Other things, like how do you see I'm your life? I'm interested in like producing. Finding some of my own projects, I think, are, are really exciting to me. I think like getting to see it develop and grow, is gonna, it would be really, really cool. Um, but for now, I'm mainly just focusing on acting. I was getting trying to get into like other things. I like to, I'm the type of person, I have severe ADHD, so I like to learn a new skill every day is what my mom calls it. Like, oh, yeah. I'll wake up and I'll be like, I'm learning French. And the next day I'm like, so I'm a ballerina now. <laughs> like, I'm all over the place. So like, I mainly focus on acting at the moment just so right. I don't like go too far off track. Well, I'm so glad to hear you're doing well. And it was so great talking to you. Um, tell people where they can follow you on social media. 
can so they can learn more at kyla kennedy i don't post too often but when i do i think they're quality posts quality <laughs> posts guys guaranteed by kyla kennedy all right thank you so much for talking to me and um you know enjoy quarantine hopefully we'll get out of this soon enjoy animal crossing you too <laughs> you johnny you too. thank you all right see Bye. you kyle